Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Lots of links in the description below. Link to join the channel as a member. Check out my website, watchcomplications.com. Follow me on Instagram. Consider subscribing here if you like what you see. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. There's a couple reasons behind that, and I need to give you some context before we get into the details. We've all had a watch when we've seen it and just had that feeling, I gotta have that, I want to have it. Unfortunately, sometimes those end up in sort of a limited edition category. Maybe you don't get it to it in time. Maybe it's vintage, there's only you know a few good specimens left. Whatever it is, we all know what that feeling is like as a watch enthusiast. One of the brands I like, I've featured on the channel you know multiple times, is Christopher Ward. And a couple reasons why I like them as a brand. One, they make really good watches. The price points are great. They're really upfront. They like interacting with their customer base in like forums, Facebook groups, that kind of stuff. They're just a really good sort of down to earth brand that makes really good products. And they sometimes have what they call prototype sales for their forum or the groups and social media. And they last year had this event, I think it was in January of 21. You just think there aren't a lot of companies out there that interact that way to provide such opportunities. As they're going through the product life cycle, there are products that are gonna make it to market. There are variations that won't. There may be entire models that won't make it to market. And so there's these things sitting around, you know, in boxes and closets and under, you know, the couch cushions of the watch headquarters. And it's like, let's put these out to the customers. Let's give them a chance to buy something cool, unique, different. And it may be only one of these exist or a couple of them, that sort of thing. So it's great, you know, benefit to this Christopher Ward community to be able to have those opportunities. Well, the one of these models, it's called the C1 Power Glow. I have no idea why I didn't make it to market. I'm sure there's good reasoning behind it. I might discuss that a little bit more as I show the watch. So anyway, there were three C1 Power Glows that were offered in this prototype cell, which leaked a little bit early. It's kind of first come, first serve. And to this day, we kind of only know in the groups and stuff, like where two of them are. If you happen to be the owner of the third, hit us up in the comments, let us know that you have it if you see the video. But two of them went to like well-known, well-respected members in, in the forum and Facebook, you know, Christopher Ward community. And I constantly sort of prod them, be like, hey, if you ever think about selling, if you ever think about selling. Well, one of them did end up selling it to another well-known, respected member of our little community. And oh, by the way, links to the, those, the forum and the Facebook group are in the description below. But sold it to another respected member, which is fine, I'm cool with that. Um, but then I started doing the same thing. Hey, if you ever think about selling, if you ever think about selling it. And eventually it happened. Thank you to those two well-known respected members. I don't know if they want me to use their names or not, so I won't, but um, you know who you are. Well, let me show you the watch up close. I'm also gonna compare it to my other Christopher Ward C1 watches and also talk about the SH21 movement a little bit. And so this is what it looks like, the C1 Power Glow prototype. You know, I've always said there's always pros and cons to a watch. I'm struggling really hard to come up with a con for this watch. and. If you've watched the channel or any of my videos, you know that is not me. There's always a niggle, there's always something. I, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna have to think about that really hard. I've done it over the past month. I'm thinking about it now as I start thinking about, you know, turning the lens around. It's like, what can I say negative about it? It didn't go to market, maybe? <laughs> Let's take a look at the C1 Power Glow prototype special watch. Let's do it. Look at this trifecta of watches. Where I wanna start, in the detail is with the Christopher Ward C1 case. This is their dress style case and their dress line has sort of faded into the background. You know, they've really concentrated on divers in recent memory, about every watch company has to some extent. I'm hoping in the near future they bring back some more interesting dress style watches as some of them aren't offered anymore. But I've had the C1 Morgan for a long time, SH21. I've had this all the way back whenever I first did a movement review on the SH21. I'm gonna link that below and in the video so you can go back and look. If you wanna know how the SH21 movement works, which the Power Glow also has, I will give a few general specs on the comparison of the C1 cases you see in front of you here, but I'm not gonna go into extreme detail on the SH21, though I'll show it and say a few things about it. 
So I recommend taking a look at that video if you have a chance. The C1 case is one of my favorite styles of cases. They have another popular case that's called the C65. It's sort of your vintage diver style case. You know, catches light in a great way. There's their C60, their C63 Sealander. I love that particular watch. They've got a lot of great case styles and designs. So specifically thinking about the C1 case, I've had one other C1 case in my collection that was the c1 small seconds love that watch small seconds being one of my favorite complications it has that sort of inflated perspective of hey small seconds is a thing simplistic design great case back love that watch probably of all the watches i've sold out of my collection that might be the one i miss the most so that's the other c1 case i've had so i've had quite a bit of experience in years of wearing this particular case design the other SH21, which the Morgan and the Power Glow both have in my collection, I had the C8 Power Reserve aviation style watch. Another very great design, great case back. But, you know, it, collections evolve, you know, styles and what you have to balance out a collection that evolves a little bit over time. The C1 case is a great, beautiful design. It's got a nice thin profile, even though it's got bigger movements in it. The SH21 is not a small movement. Again, you can go look at some of that detail. They often implement it as a hand wound movement, which is what's in the Morgan. The Power Glow is the first SH21 that I've had that is an automatic, which gives a little bit more height to the movement. It's a big movement overall. With these two being SH21s, the C1 Grand Malvern Moon Phase, very popular watch, they don't make it anymore, is not an SH21. This is an ETA 2836-2, and it has a module, a custom caliber module on top of it called the JJ04. It's a little bit of a thicker movement. So all these have really big movements inside of them. And the C1 case being dress style is like, well, how do you make that feel slim on the wrist? And that comes down to the design and how it sits on the wrist. So looking at these on the face, all similar diameter, 40.5 millimeter, all the same lug to lug, 48.5 millimeter. Height is where we get into the difference along with weight. The Morgan is 11.6 millimeter, Power Glow 13.7, and the Moon Phase 12.4. So we see the manual SH21. Look, it's got a little bit of a slimmer profile. Where you would notice this is in the main part of the case between the bezel and toward the case back. You can see there's a lot more height on the automatic movement with the extra complications on there. You can just see the thickness here is different and also how far down the, the case back goes to give that extra space for height. And same idea here. Notice that the profile, as you go across from the Morgan with sort of that slimmest profile, really deep power glow. And then you've got the C1 moon phase over here. Has a little bit more thickness than any of the others across the lugs here, but not near as deep as a case back as the power glow. But when it comes to the weight, I've got them in sort of order here. The weight of the Morgan 69 grams, Power Glow 74, and the Moon 86. Different movements, different heights, different complications. So that gives you like dimensional context for these amazing, all of them in their own right, C1 cases with amazing complications and implementations across those. And they have really cool looking straps on them, right? By the way, this is the custom Bader deployant clasp that CW uses sometimes on their cases with this Cordovan, you know, dark blue leather. On the Morgan and the Power Glow, I have this crazy horse leather. These are 10 bucks off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. So love me a C1 case, but let's take a closer look at the SH21 and the Power Glow specifically. So in the Christopher Ward Cannon, these might be two of the best watches that they have made, and I hope you can see why, particularly as I, I turn them around as well and see the case backs, that I am just blessed, um, lucky to have these particular two watches. I was able to pick up this Morgan in one of their fairly common sales. Like They have a summer sale, they have like a winter sale. I was able to pick this up as nearly new. These watches are not low cost and they're sort of at the top of the catalog in terms of what CW offers. I think we're going to see that catalog expand. It does so a little bit every so often with custom works and limited editions that they do, and, and I hope to see some more of that too, just to balance out sort of that 
entry level diver style sort of stuff. I mean, which one would you pick? Which which one would you want to wear? Man, I haven't even got to my wrist check yet. Let's do that. I'm wearing my Armin Strom. Gravity water. Check out the review on this and that whole process of me chasing my grail. And man, I love this watch. Okay, back to the stars of the show. And well, we'll call this the star of the show, right? This is top drawer, someone might say. So why do I like this particular style? I love my power reserve and small seconds complications. That's simple. That and the bridge work that they do on the SH-21s is just stellar. Let me show the Morgan real quick. I've seen it maybe before if you watch some of my other videos, but I mean, look at this. This is the manual caliber of the SH-21. And you can see this one has 31 joules. I think the Power Glow has 33. And just look at the beveling, polished beveling on these black assuming PVD bridges. You got the, the jewels in there. The serial construction of the barrels for the 120 hour five day power reserve. I mean, it's kind of got like a bead blasted between here. I mean, if the, it, look, if watch movements make you drool, like this is the one, right? Like, I love looking at this watch. Style work again has that sort of three dimensional look to it, and the power glow takes that to extreme and adds on the date complication, which is what this does. I like my no date watches. Again, my regular viewers know something. Oh, the complication I probably like the least is date, but well, maybe not the least. But it's you know the implementations matter. I hate you know dates at three for the most part drives me nuts. So let's talk power glow. Still got the small seconds, which in the design of the SH21 movement, which I talk about in my review video on the movement, is they can put it at center at six and they don't have to modify the gear train to do that, which is a cool aspect of the of the custom design. Power reserve at nine o'clock. Got time, our minute hand. And then we have the date complication, which is kind of around this chapter ring. It has a date from one to 31, and it's loomed behind here, has this red section that will rotate around on this disc. They've done other watches with this same sort of thing, not the SH-21, but one that comes to mind is the CW Sandstorm, which is a special collaboration watch. So it's not the first time they've done the date this way on a watch, but on the SH-21, it looks pretty good. The dial construction on this is also three-dimensional, kind of like the Morgan. It is a sapphire dial, but it's got so much detail in it and so many parts that there's just a lot of material variation in here, surface texture, that kind of thing. And why is it called Power Glow? Well, lots of loom. So the, the days are loom, this bar around here is loom, the batons, the hands, the, the rotor on the back, there's just all kinds of loom on this watch. Got the touches of red, chronometer, the date, on the power reserve hand in there when it's getting down to the minimum. And again, I'm just thinking about cons. I mean, maybe a con you could make out of it is how it sort of cuts the numerals off over here, but come on, I mean, that's like I mean, grasping at straws at that point. So let's take a look at side profile. It's got the twin flags there, which they've moved to for sort of their main logo at this point, at least at the filming of this video. Even though this has got a lot of height to it, I mean, it's almost 14 millimeters. It's similar in the way that it will fit on the wrist, kind of like Rolex, if you have that the case back that sits down, but the way that the side of the case is designed is this case back and that height you see there, that snuggles down into the top of your wrist and what you end up seeing from the side view on your wrist is just this side profile. You you know, that, that case back and that extra height sort of escapes you, so it looks a lot thinner on the wrist than you might expect when you hear, man, that's that's a tall, tall case, tall movement. You know, and this is a rarity of a watch in, in a lot of different ways. There are only three of them that we know of, and this is one. I know who has another one, and the third one is a mystery. Again, let us know if you're the person, but it's a watch you're just not going to see. This is the only video you are going to ever find or see that has the C1 Power Glow prototype. Now, you see the white lines here on the rotor? Those are loomed. I'll put a picture, of course, that show the Power Glow in its luminescent glory. You see the twin barrels there? It's an interesting implementation. It's kind of like a cross between what was on the C8 power reserve and kind of what you see on the Morgan. 
So they both had a little bit more blacked out sort of style of movement in the bridge work, but the barrel styles are always different on the, the C1 cases or SH21 movements. And this one looks closest to the barrels on the C8 power reserve, but then the bridge work is sort of tied in from this Morgan. So it's a kind of a combination. You see it's the same design language, but it's got its own sort of unique touch as well. So the rotor just sort of glides around. It's open, you know, skeletonized rotor so that you can see that movement. And why not, right? And this is really about just giving views at this prototype. I love how they have like the winding direction text, similar on some of their other SH-21 barrels. See the finishings, a little bit unique, different. You got sort of this halfway points between them sort of thing that comes to sort of like a, what looks like a, a visual peak. It's got a mix between a circular pattern and I guess almost like a sunburst as well to it. Really clever sort of layout in terms of the, the bridge work and the finishing on those just plays with the light in very, very cool ways, if you ask me. So that's the case back. And again, depth, you can see the SH-21 behind there. And a lot more of a visual reward, I think, than some of their other sapphire dials, which they use a lot of uh, Soleta movements and which are sort of bare bones movements are good movements. They they'll last a long time, easily fixable, replaceable, etc. The SH21 has just a different visual appeal to it than sort of that standard, you know, workhorse movement. Like if I want to change the date, notice right here is the wheel. You can see it rotate there for the date. So quick change the date. You can see how that goes around. Right? Um, winding, smooth. Let me flip this around, get the rotor in a spot where it kind of see the winding on the SH-21. You see the first barrel moving there. Action over here as well. So it's gonna charge those appropriately. A small seconds hand on this. Really unique design. You see that there? I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Like, this isn't even necessarily a review. This is like, hey, this watch exists. Exists. You can still buy a Morgan. So these are still available for sale. What do I think of the watch? Um, epic. It's got everything I would want in a watch. It's got the diameter right in my wheelhouse between 40, 41 millimeter. It's got the complications about anybody would want implemented in a way that's just beautiful. If you are into darker sort of style watches, a little bit of, you know, stealthiness to them, this, it's also dress style. It's a watch that no one else is going to have. You can walk into a room and, you know, half the people, you know, fancy dinner or something, half the people could be wearing watches that someone else in the same room has. And uh, that is not a danger with a watch like this. You know, CW puts up these, these prototype cells. I, I suggest joining the communities on Facebook and the, and the forum because these opportunities to have unique one-off watches is just something cool, again, that the company does. And I, I highly recommend to get involved so that you can actually have a chance at owning different types of prototypes as they continue to interact with their customer base in this sort of unique way that other companies just don't. All right, so maybe the only con to this is the height, but that melts away when it's on the wrist and it's worth it. <laughs> the, the juice is worth the squeeze on this one. What can I say? The C1 Christopher Ward Power Glow, man, in some ways, I wish it had made it to market. In some ways, I'm glad that I have a unique piece of their sort of history. And yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm done. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to be the owner of this watch. It is so cool. It is so unique. Um, it's everything I would want in a watch. It's got that sort of overall dark vibe. I think that's why I like my Tudor Black Bay ceramic so much. 
It's got the blacked out movement, that cool touch of loom on the rotor, just the, the dial, the 3D construction, power reserve, one of my favorite complications, small second, one of my favorite complications, that SH21 custom in-house. I mean, it, there's just so much to like about the C1 Power Glow. Can't believe didn't make it to market, but hey, I am happy I have one. Unlike the two previous owners of this who decided eventually to pass it along, I don't see myself ever passing this along. This will stay in my collection permanently, so don't ask me about it. Whew. Thanks everyone. All the info's in the description below, including the blog post that will accompany this video. If you wanna see some more pictures, some of them were scattered into the video, textual information, that's all there on the Watch Complications website. Thank you to my regular viewers and subscribers. If you haven't hit the button or the bell, consider that. Maybe join as a member. And also there's merch on the store if you're interested. I'm going to go enjoy this nice first day of fall. I'm out.